Hi and welcome to the Beekeeper's Lead Day. I'm Madeline Klotz and I'm the Honeybee Development Officer with DPI New South Wales. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about honeybee nutrition and the sort of signs you can look for in terms of knowing whether your colony has the nutritional requirements that it needs, whether it's got enough um, stores and pollen and nectar sources coming in. And we have a look at some of the frames and some of the feeding options that you might want to think about if you do not have the nutrition that the bees need and if you do not have the option of moving your bees somewhere else. So the first sign that you can look for in terms of um, nutritional sources for a colony is to have a look at the entrance and whether you can see any honeybees coming back with pollen sources. So that's what you want to um, have a look at and ideally also pay attention to the colors of pollen that the bees are bringing back. So if the bees are bringing back a range of colors that's ideal because then you know that they're going to different floral sources and even if any of the um, pollens that they're bringing back are deficient like a lot of our eucalypt species can be deficient in some essential amino acids so they are amino acids that the bees can only obtain from their diet and not produce by themselves. So they really have to get them from, from the pollen. And um, some of our eucalypts are also low in fats. So if the bees can collect a range of different types of pollen, so for example, also of other weeds that are flowering or other ground cover, then that gives them a good um, balanced diet. So you wanna look for different, different colors. Mm -hmm. So at the moment um, it is spring where I am and I can see the bees bringing in a bit of pollen and um, what I've actually set up here is two um, nucleus colonies, so two small colonies and what I wanted to see mm -hmm. is how much pollen and nectar are they bringing in, is it enough to um, get them going and um, grow for um, spring and build up the colonies or do they still need a little bit more. So one, one way is to look at the entrance of the hives and the other way is looking at um, pollen and nectar or honey stores inside of the colony to get an idea what's going on. And at the moment um, it is springtime, so the bees are starting to bring in um, resources. But what I wanted to know is how much are they bringing back? Do they still need more or not? So what I've done here is I've set up two nucleus hives with um, different feeders. And the idea is that bees will um, go out and forage for what they need. So you always have a certain percentage of a colony that are foragers. And from that percentage, a colony will allocate a certain amount of foragers to collect nectar and the others will collect pollen. Some will be collecting a little bit of both, but they will adjust the number of foragers that will collect either one or the other depending on, on what the requirements are. So what we can um, look at now is actually have a look at their stores and see whether they um, have taken what I've actually been feeding them with. So um, this colony right here are fed with um, pollen supplement under the lid and um, this colony over here has actually been fed with a front feeder um, with a 50-50% sugar water. And I talk a little bit more about um, what sort of concentrations you want to be using when and um, what sort of feeding options you have in a minute. So first let's have a look at one of the colonies. So as we can see here, and this is a classic example bees actually getting enough from the environment. So what I have done here is I fed the bees with a commercially available um, supplementary feed, but they have actually not touched it. So, the, so when um, bees get enough from the environment, then they will not need any other supplement and they will always prefer, prefer fresh resources over anything stored or any supplementary feed that we provide them with. Okay, so what I'm actually expecting to find in here, given that they have not touched the supplementary feed, is that they would have a good amount of pollen stores. I do have to say that with this colony, I specifically made it up so that they had foundation uh, um, drawn frames, so frames with, with wax build up but no stores, because I wanted to see how they're going to respond to my feeding and what they're bringing in. So this was a little bit of an 
little bit of an experiment if you like at a very small scale so usually you would do this at a much um, larger scale if you were actually doing an experiment test um, so what I'm looking for now is the amount of stores that they've brought in so everything you can pretty much see here is what the bees have collected within the last couple of days and it, what you can see here is that they've actually collected a variety of different pollen sources so there's different colors here that you can see and there's also a mm -hmm. bit of nectar that they're bringing in so really they are at the moment bringing in enough from the environment to feed off so i'm just going to have a look also at um, at the other frame so usually the, the stores food stores you would find on the outside frames and the brood would be in the middle So here they've started to um, fill up the cells with a little bit of, of fresh nectar on that side. Over here yeah. there's still a lot of bees on here so I might just quickly shake them off. And of course you have to check that the queen isn't there. Um, so over here we also have these uh, honey stores. They've already had that on that frame so they just started bringing in a bit of nectar and a bit of pollen. Um, on that frame. Now um, the other things that you can look for in terms of knowing whether the colony is has good nutrition is first the colony size. So now this is a small colony because I have actually um, split a larger colony but you can have a look at how many bees are in the box, how many frames are they covering, is there a good cluster of bees and mm -hmm. then the other thing you can look also look for is is there a range of ages mm -hmm. in in the brood so can you see eggs can you see larvae and the different development stages and some cap brood just check if the queen is on here So on this frame I can see um, capped brood, I can see um, larvae at all sorts of different stages so that's a very good sign. And another something else that you get used to looking at um, once you've checked the frame or had a closer look at the brood is the amount of royal jelly that mm. the larva is surrounded with. So if there's a lot mm. of jelly, if the larva is essentially um, swimming in jelly if you like, mm -hmm. then um, that is a good indication that there's a good source of nutrition coming in and the nurse bees are producing lots of um, jelly to feed to feed the larvae. If that's not the case then um, the larvae mm -hmm. might look like there's only very little food source it almost looks a little bit dry in, in comparison. So these are the sorts of things that you can um, look for in a colony so that first thing we looked at was what sort of pollen sources are the bees bringing in? Are they bringing in pollen sources? Then you can look at colony strength. How many um, frames are covered with bees? Look at um, the, the brood size and um, ages of brood, jelly production, and of course the food um, resources. So the pollen, amount of pollen and the amount of nectar. A colony um, so a full-size colony would um, only ever store about a kilogram of pollen as bee bread inside of a colony whereas honey they store lots of but depending on the demand depending on the resources coming in in the environment the bees might be um, consuming that pollen store fairly quickly if um, there's nothing coming in or, there might, or that store can, can be there for quite some time if there's enough pollen coming in from the environment. So um, the other colony I've fed with um, sugar and I know that they have taken up the sugar because um, I've attached this feeder to the front and I've actually fed them a few times. But what um, sugar feeding does, especially if you feed a um, more 
um, dilute sugar syrup so if it is one to one so uh, 50, 50 parts sugar to 50 parts um, water by what by um, by weight for example um, is you are mimicking more or less a nectar flow so you're stimulating the bees and with feeding the key is to know what are you feeding why are you feeding it and when when to feed because depending on the time of the year you might want to uh, either just feed the bees to keep them alive or you might want to feed them a thin sugar syrup like this one which just attaches to the front of the hive if you're feeding small quantities to um, actually stimulate the bees for pollen collection and that you might want to do either in preparation for um, producing small uh, producing large colonies for crop pollination um, or also in um, queen, queen production and if you want to red rounds, if you need lots of pollen to, to feed the colony. Um, okay. Okay, so in terms of sugar feeding, you can either use the front feeders if you're sm feeding small quantities or you can, um, if you're feeding an apiary, then you can feed um, open feeding, uh, use open feeding, having some sort of a tub and you need to have also um, a, something to land on for the bees because otherwise bees can very easily drown in sugar syrup so you would either want to think of putting in some straw, cloth or anything else that the bees can land on um, if you are not wanting to stimulate your bees but instead feed your bees just to keep them alive as it can be the case um, during drought or bushfire scenario you might want to think about using sugar um, dry sugar instead and with the sugar you want to feed sucrose so do not use any raw sugar brown sugar or molasses because that can be um, toxic to the bees so the idea is just like with what we saw with um, the pollen feeds you can provide the bees on a mat with um, just dry sugar and the bees will take take that up but it doesn't it doesn't stimulate the bees as such um, pollen feeding can also be done in various ways the important thing about pollen feeding is the closer it is to the brood box the more easily um, bees will actually consume it so if you're having a single box like this one you can feed on top of the top of the frames if you have a um, double box you would like to f or ideally feed as close to the brood as possible so you can provide the bees with a either a paddy under the um, excluder or you can also open feed and the bees will just go and, and collect the, um, the pollen supplement in, in a container if you like. Um, in terms of feeding um, pollen back to bees that can be done as well but the important thing here is only if it is irradiated because it is a um, biosecurity risk in terms of um, disease management so you can have disease in the pollen so that's why it's important to get it irradiated and um, pollen irradiated pollen is is available as a, as a commercial um, supplement or otherwise there are several other commercial supplements um, that are not not entirely pollen-based 